I will talk about the young teller distortion today. In a ML6 octahedral structure, sometimes we observe the OH symmetry is broken with two elongated ML bonds in the Z direction or the four ML bonds elongated in the X and Y directions. Why is that? Uh, on the left hand side you see a perfect octahedral structure. On the right hand side you see the ML bonds along the Z axis are elongated. That means the DZ squared orbital is now farther away from the negative charges on the two ligands. And that reduces the repulsion this DZ squares, DZ squared orbital fields. That's the so-called crystal field theory. And therefore this DZ squared has lower energy than this DX squared minus Y squared orbital in this elongated octahedral structure. For the same reason, DXZ and DYZ have now lower energy than the DXY orbital. But the energy decrease is much smaller than the energy decrease of this DZ squared. Only because DZ squared is pointing directly to these two ligands. DXZ and DYZ are not directly pointing to these two ligands. If we elongate the four ML bonds in the XY plan, for the same reason, the DX squared minus Y squared orbital now has lower energy than the DZ squared orbital. Only because now this DXY minus Y squared atomic orbital on the transition metal is farther away from the four ligands in the XY plan. Similarly, this DXY orbital has lower energy than the DXZ and DYZ orbital. Only because this DXY orbital is also on the XY plan. However, the energy decrease of this DXY is much smaller than the energy decrease of DX squared minus Y squared. Because DX squared minus Y squared are pointing directly to the four ligands. This DXY does not. So this energy gap is overly exaggerated. And when do we observe this young teller distortion? It's very simple. We just need to first count the number of D electrons and see if there's any sign of broken degeneracy. When we have a low spin transition metal complex with a large delta O, usually it's because the 4D and 5D transition metals have more diffuse D orbitals and can interact with the ligands more strongly. Or sometimes when we have pi electron acceptors uh, such as triphenylphosphane, cyanide, and carbonyl ligands, they are good pi electron acceptors which allows this pi backbonding from the transition metal to the ligand to happen and again causes strong interaction between the transition metal and the ligands and then we have large delta O. When we have large delta O the energy difference between the two degenerate EG orbitals are much higher than the bottom three T2G orbitals. On top they are DX squared minus Y squared and DZ squared. On the bottom you have DXY, DYZ and DXZ. 
If we have only one D electron, we observe the broken degeneracy among these three orbitals. So this orbital will have lower energy than the other two, but only slightly lower than the other two because DXY again is not pointing directly to the four ligands in the XY plane. So small young teller effect. In this case, these two orbitals will have slightly lower energy than this one. We observe small young teller effect here again because DXY, DYZ, and DXC are not pointing directly to the ligands. When we have three D electrons, the degeneracy is preserved. We have exactly the one electron, the same number of electrons in each of the three orbital. When we have four D electrons, we observe a, a broken degeneracy. This one, this orbital, occupied by two electrons, will have slightly lower energy than the other two. We observe small young teller effect. Again, small young teller effect. No young teller effect at all. Large young teller effect. Only because this electron is occupying one of the two EG orbitals. And these two orbitals are pointing directly to the ligands. Therefore, we observe large young teller effect due to the broken degeneracy. Again, this orbital will have much lower energy than this orbital. No young teller effect, very large young teller effect. Uh, copper 2 plus is a commonly used example in transition metal textbooks. No young teller effect. Uh, what about high spin cases? Uh, when we have high spin cases, usually they have small delta O. Usually the transition metal is a 3D transition metal bonded to ligands uh, that are p electron donors, such as bromido, iodido, oxido, chloride. Uh, because they donate p electrons uh, into the uh, DXY. DYZ and uh, DXZ orbitals, uh, this interaction bumps up these three orbitals and causes smaller energy spreading between the three D orbitals and the two EG orbitals. The result is a small delta O. When that happens, again, let's look at just one electron the same, small young tail effect small young teller effect, no young teller effect. Over here, D4, this is different. We observe large young teller effect in this case. Again, it's because these two EG orbitals point to the ligands directly. There is a much larger young teller effect. If you observe broken degeneracy between this EG orbitals, then in this three T2G orbitals. So again, large young teller effect. No young teller effect, small young teller effect, small young teller effect, no young teller effect, very large young teller effect, no young teller effect.